What's up guys? Thanks so much for checking in again and this week we're going to be looking at and listening to some of the differences you can get with a $400 entry level jazz guitar versus something you might find in a professional's hands around the $2,000 range. So this video was inspired by a video I did two, two and a half years ago entitled $400 versus $2,000 jazz guitar um, which I will leave a link to right here if you feel like watching that or in the description. That'll be part one. This is a follow-up video to that, so I'm going to be including some things that I learned in the last two and a half years uh, with both these guitars, what they're good for. Um, it'll be a more in-depth comparison, and I'll explain some of the questions that I've been asked over those two years. So, the first guitar we're going to be looking at here is the Ibanez AF71F. It's the more affordable option, and it has a couple differences that I'll explain in a second. If you watched my video last week, I took this guitar, I put it in a studio situation, and I used techniques like compression, EQ, and uh, different mic placements. I wanted to try and come up with the best possible sound you could get out of a $400 guitar in a studio situation. Uh, the point of today's video is going to be looking at the two guitars, uh, comparing them to each other in a more practical context, so maybe in a live situation where you're not going to be adding compression and EQ and such. Um, so looking at the guitar, the first thing I want to comment on is the laminate construction. This is a maple guitar, but it is laminate wood. You're not going to be able to find a solid wood guitar at the $400 price range, no matter where you're looking. The differences are the solid wood in the Eastman, the ebony fingerboard in the Eastman, compared to the rosewood in the Ibanez, which again uh, is a price point thing. Ebony is a lot more expensive, so you're going to find rosewood on cheaper guitars. Another difference you're going to find is the lower bout size on the Ibanez is only 16 inches. It's a distance from those two points. Compared to the Eastman, which is 17 inches, that's a big guitar. And uh, bigger guitars cost more money and they take more wood. Um, other than that, we have a few other minor differences. Some very important things to note here is I'm using the exact same strings. I put them on at the same time. These are Daddario Chrome's 12 gauge flat wounds. Uh, which differs from my previous video where I was using round wounds and it's got a floating pickup which is a big deal to the construction of the guitar the sound you're getting so there's nothing touching the guitar except for the bridge which is a floating bridge it's not connected to the guitar it's just held on by pressure another very important topic to consider uh, and these are similarities that these guitars have in common other differences you're getting obviously uh, just better electronics in the Eastman than the Ibanez um, mechanical features like the tuners these are kind of cheap tuners they seem to work fine one thing I will say for the benefit of this guitar is the very nice fret rounding that they they've done and for a cheaper guitar that can be an issue a lot of the times um, but this is honestly a pretty well-made guitar and I think it sounds sounds very nice for the price so we'll look at the Eastman now Like I said, solid wood. You can tell this guitar is a little bit bigger. I've added another pickup, which I would like to consider um, in the realm of developing a professional instrument. I didn't care for the pickup that came on it very much, but I think most people replace the pickups on their guitars. Um, also, a floating pickup. It's not mounted to the top. Um, just some aesthetic things, as I just love how the back of this looks. Now, one thing that sets this Eastman that I haven't mentioned yet apart from the Ibanez is the finish. Um, there's gonna be a lot of people I assume that disagree with me here, but I think especially on acoustic instruments, the finish is a big deal. On the Ibanez, you've got this heavy lacquer shiny finish. Um, on the Eastman, this was actually a prototype. I got this in 2016 uh, before they started doing this on all of their guitars. It's actually a violin varnish. It kind of amazes me that it took guitar makers so long to catch up to violin luthiers when it comes to finishes. Um, if you've got a heavy finish on the top of the guitar, it's obviously going to affect how well it vibrates. A couple years ago, I was at a store where they, they just had so many arch tops I could try. I played everything from vintage D'Angelico's. Um, I played an L5 Gibson, and I just decided on this Eastman. It was a newer guitar, and it was more reliable. But one thing that was really important, um, I ended up sitting down with this guitar and one other one, exactly identical, same make, same model, same year, just with a different finish. I mentioned before that this finish was actually a prototype for the Eastman line, now they've adopted it entirely, but the difference between those two guitars was literally just the finish. So you'll have to take my word for it, but one of the 
big things I got out of this guitar was just the wide range of dynamics compared to the lacquered finish. Now this guitar, I was able to get a much louder sound overall and the softer tones that I would play uh, were just, they just came out a lot easier and they were much sweeter and it sustained longer. And that's just due in part to the availability that the top had to vibrate. Again, this is just another thing that a more expensive guitar can accommodate. Now I will say in the two years that I've had this guitar, the finish has started to rub off a bit. Um, and also it's just very prone to checking and chipping. I am very careful with this guitar, but it happens. You can see some stuff on the back. I did this with a mic stand a couple weeks ago. So I think I'm gonna get into some sound demos now with these two guitars so you can hear the differences. Uh, as always, leave me a comment down below. I'm great at answering them if you have any questions along the way and we'll get to it. So keep in mind now, the question isn't so much, does one guitar sound better than the other? Uh, it's more along the lines of, does the $2,000 price tag on the Eastman justify the differences in sound, options, playability, compared to the Ibanez? So we just heard a purely acoustic example there. Uh, I was using two mics to get kind of a good balance between those. The larger mics are generally better at picking up the lower sounds, but again, I was not adding EQ or compression. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how they stacked up and next up we're gonna be looking at the guitars played through my amp over here exclusively and after that we'll be able to hear the guitars in a more realistic scenario, one that I find myself playing in pretty often. So what you just heard was the isolated acoustic and electric sounds of the guitars. 
By the way, my amp over there is a Supro 1622RT. My microphones are the Audio-Technica 2020 and 2021, which I'm using for a vocal mic right now. What I really like to use these guitars for is in more intimate settings. I rarely play them with a drummer. So in a very small setting, the audience is actually gonna be hearing both the acoustic and the electric sounds. And I will demonstrate those right now. Thank you guys for checking out this video. If it's helped you, if you feel so inclined, make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below. Uh, last week we looked at the Ibanez in an ideal situation in a studio where I use studio techniques to kind of enhance the sound of it. In the next two weeks we're going to be looking at the Eastman and the Ibanez in a full band context. I'll be doing the same for each of them. Uh, if you want to check out part one of this video, which I released uh, I think back in June of 2016 it has over like 115,000 views of it right now it's been it's been my best video on the channel so far but if you want to check that out I'll leave a link here and if you're watching this in the future I will leave thumbnails on the screen at the end of this video for the next two videos coming out so thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time